não consegue. Desculpa, não lhe queria dizer. Ele, ele... Thank you very much, uh, Cas, for the kind introduction. And good afternoon, everyone here. Good morning on the other side of the Atlantic, and good night to those in the Pacific. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague uh, Ricardo Conte, he was not able to join us and, uh, and to be here. Uh, he will be later today, so I'm here to, to substitute him. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Portuguese Space Agency to give you um, uh, an introduction of um, what's the agency and then how we'll link also to one of the most uh, emerging issues, which is the, the space traffic management. Um, Portugal started uh, in space a long time ago. It was in the, in the year uh, 2000 when Portugal became the 15th member of, uh, of ESA. Uh, and thanks to this, uh, it, it helped us to initiate activities in, in space, to grow an ecosystem um, uh, in space. And in the last 21 years, this has been uh, pretty much what we have been doing, creating an ecosystem, growing, until it was reaching a moment where we needed uh, to have something a little bit more uh, stable with a vision for the future. And it was, was then when the National Space Strategy was, uh, was created in 2018. And to implement this strategy, it was needed uh, a space agency to create this space nation by 2030. This is the vision that was um, established by the BioStrategy and is what we aim at the Portuguese Space Agency. Again, it was created in 2019. Uh, we are now a little bit two years old uh, existence. And we have uh, as main uh, goals, of course, to increase the economic growth, uh, increase the technology capacity, use space also in our international relations and continuously developing the space sector. Until 2030, we expect uh, to move from six companies that exist now to much more in the future. We have right now around 500 professionals working in space with uh, 50 million years spent in, uh, in space business. Most of it is uh, public money, but we want in the future to multiply all of this by 10 and have more uh, private money bring to, to the table, bring to the space business. We want to have new players. We are working on that. We want to increase the number of people working in space. We want to become uh, subsystem and system um, uh, providers to the space industry. Uh, and therefore, this is what we we are working for and what we aim uh, for the next years. We can see in this graphic how funding has uh, evolved since the year 2000. Uh, we can see that in the beginning was pretty much uh, easy con contributions that we have from Portugal. But if we now uh, look into the other programs that we have in Portugal, the, like Horizon 20, 2020, Horizon Europe, we have the, our national contribution to ESO, our national contribution to SCA, We also have the mobilizing um, projects that uh, we have in Portugal. So with all of this, uh, when we sum up, we have now uh, more than 50 million euros uh, spent in space, and this continues to grow. So this is what we are providing to the industry for them to, to continue uh, their grow. But this has to come with, uh, with challenges, with very specific domains where we want to, to grow and where we want our industry and our academia to, to move forward. So for this, we have different uh, challenges uh, for different domains. We have the Atlantic Constellation in Earth Observation, the Digital Planet, uh, space connectivity, the, an eco, space ecosystem in, in the uh, islands of Santa Maria, And of course, we want to continue this building up of capacity in science and exploration. What is this Atlantic constellation? We are an uh, Atlantic country. Uh, we have all of this uh, Atlantic Ocean to, to monitor, where our economy depends a lot of it, on it. So we set up the goal to create an Atlantic constellation for Earth observation. The industry heard this, this call from, from our side, and they actually took the first step when they uh, uh, joined um, uh, a small company uh, that was created, and they acquired two satellites, Earth observation satellites. The, the company is called Geosat. It's a Portuguese company who acquired two satellites, one uh, in low resolution and one in uh, high resolution. So right now, Portugal has the capability of high resolution imagery data for Earth observation. 
We want to continue this, uh, this activity, and therefore we want to have a satellite constellation for the Atlantic for high resolution with 16 satellites and one with a very high resolution, perhaps with three uh, satellites. But this only makes sense if it's commercially driven. So this is the goal uh, that the industry must aim, of course, uh, with the support of, of, uh, of the agency, with the support of government, but then move to the private sector, move to the commercial activities, because only then they are sustainable. But all of this data that has been generated uh, can only be used if there's a proper system, like a digital platform for Earth observation data, that can also integrate different sources of data, and which, using this data, will have services for the community. So this is what we want to develop, the digital, plat digital planet, a multi-platform that will have all of this data coming, coming through and then provide services to, um, to the different uh, uh, public system, uh, pu public services, or even private uh, that need uh, support from Earth observation data. Since we are launching 16 satellites, uh, they are also looking to the possibility to have space connectivity, and therefore we are very much supporting the space connectivity. Sorry, I'm going too fast. And of course, we have a particular zone of the, of the Atlantic, which is Azores, that has special capability for space uh, exploration. One of the aspects, and we have it already in place, is the uh, the gateway to space, the gateway for communications, where we have different antennas uh, to communicate with, um, uh, for GNSS, for Earth, Earth Association data, for meteorological data, and we want to continue to foster this uh, ecosystem of, of uh, the ground segment and antennas. It is also a another great zone to, to land the Space Rider. The Space Rider is a vehicle from ESA that uh, uh, will be operating uh, in a few years, and of course this was a great opportunity to have them landing in Azores. We, that this will develop another system or another capability, which is the payload data processing facility. It is of course a great uh, place to have small rockets uh, being launched from there. You, you all know the story about the, the spaceport. So therefore we want to, to foster uh, all of this ecosystem that can be created around uh, Azores and the Santa Maria. But space is much more than that. And now it brings me to the picture that I wanted to, to show you before. Apparently, this picture doesn't have to be much with space. Uh, it's a football uh, final, but everybody likes to watch the football finals and watch like football. You also have this image that apparently doesn't have to, me, to do much with space, which is the stock market. Um, but there's something very particular with this, all of these images, and then we have here the EGNOS. EGNOS is just a, a, another satellite or a constellation that exists that supports aviation, supports agriculture, supports uh, transportation. But all of these images uh, have something in common, is that they use space assets that for us, uh, down on Earth, we Normally, we don't see it every day, but we are making use of all of these assets uh, in our daily life. When we use Google Maps, uh, we are using GNSS uh, signals that uh, guide us through our navigation from point A to point B. When we are watching the finals of uh, football or uh, the Olympics, we, without knowing, we are using satellite communications to have this signal coming from far away to our place. Uh, all the bank systems also use satellite data to have um, uh, in their transactions and everything. So what does this mean if we destroy our space assets? And we are not very far away from that, because there's an issue which is the space debris. Uh, more and more and more we have space debris floating around the Earth. Uh, we have uh, more satellites, we have bigger constellations. Uh, we have uh, last stages of rockets fly, uh, floating around. And if we destroy our space assets, uh, we are changing the way we live on Earth. We will be back to the old days where we didn't have satellites to support us in all of these activities during all the older days. So we need to look into the space uh, debris. So we need to look into the space surveillance and tracking. We need to monitor the, the waste that is floating around, uh, around the Earth. We need space traffic management. Why? We need to understand 
how many uh, spacecrafts we have floating around Earth. We need to see how they interact with, the, with themselves, with each other. Because if we have uh, an accident, like happened in the past, of two satellites colliding, this will not just destroy these two or three satellites, but will generate an enormous amount of debris that will have an interaction with all of the other satellites that exist on board. And this, of course, will have, and this is a little bit far away, but net traffic management uh, implications. Why? If you have more vehicles or more uh, objects returning back to Earth, we need to ensure that these, document, these, um, uh, these fragments, these, these pieces of material, will not interfere with our aircraft that are flying on, uh, around our planet, which may have impact on uh, human lives. Therefore, we need to look into all of these aspects, and space traffic management is nowadays one of the most uh, dis talked points in the uh, world wild. And I chose this picture just to show, this is uh, from a study from Deloitte, to show we how just uh, the framework of space traffic management, all of the ecosystem that exists around, around this issue. We have, for example, intergovernmental agencies like European Commission, uh, ESA, um, uh, OISPA, UMETSAT, SETSEN, and many others, the European Parliament. You have national governments um, from the law point of view, but also from research perspectives. You have the satellite operators, you have downstream, you have um, uh, private companies, you have the United Nations that for somehow they should look into the possibility to harmonize uh, the space traffic management. And of course, we all the citizens, we are the end users. Um, so we have to deal with the space traffic management in a way that are sustainable for all uh, Earth, uh, for all the entities that work in space in order to have a sustainable space in the future. Imagine if uh, our kids or our grandkids in the future would come and talk to us and say, look, we cannot no longer go to space, we cannot have human space flight because space is full of debris, is full of uh, uh, satellites that is now very difficult for us to send humans into space because the risk is too high. Or imagine if we somehow destroy the capabilities that we have in space and they can no longer uh, rely on space data. This will have a huge impact in the future that now is the opportunity to, we have to, to solve it and to make sure that this um, that we can continue to use space uh, for society on Earth. And this is what we are doing also in Portugal. Uh, we have the SST, Space Surveillance and Tracking, where um, the, our defense is part of the European uh, SST program. We are looking to, the, looking to space and monitoring, um, uh, monitoring the debris. We are also part of an easy mission for active debris, debris, debris removal. Uh, and this is a mission from Clear Space, where a company, a Portuguese company, Demo Space, they are developing the GNC, which is a critical system to go on orbit, capture this uh, piece of, um, uh, of system that is floating around and bring it back to Earth. So this is also our contribution that we are performing uh, in space to, um, uh, to solve this issue. But this is on a technical uh, side. On the, on the political side, let's say, for example, doing at the Portuguese presidency of the European Council, where the Portuguese Space Agency took a, a very active role uh, leading all the space discussions, it was able to, uh, not just in the Space Council conclusions, which is a document agreed by, at Council level by the, by the European Union member states, uh, where STM was written to be, start to be looking into the future, but also a non-paper was issued uh, about space traffic management where now you, Europe is looking to the, how to set up uh, the, per, the, the base for all of these discussions to occur within Europe, also with, with NASA, with Japan, which are now, uh, sorry, the US and, and Japan, which are now the countries that are uh, most advanced in STM. Uh, so this is our contribution where we are looking forward to work at towards the Space Nation by 2030. This is just one part that is very much related to the issues today we are going to discuss. 
Uh, and we, of course, look very much, uh, of course, to the NASA. The, hopefully, we'll have now uh, the previous speaker that will come now on, on, floor, on the floor. Uh, and we're looking for, for collaborations. We have already some collaborations on capacity building with NASA. And of course, we want to, to build more, uh, more possibilities for the future. So we are open uh, to initiate continued negotiations. And perhaps I will now give the floor. Thank you very much for the opportunity to have me here and to have Portugal space. And I'll give the floor back to you, Carlos. Thank you.